All right, guys, today I wanted to take a minute to talk about snapping turtles. These are some of my favorite turtles. Uh, I actually have a whole bunch of them. So I figure what better thing to do on a kind of a dreary day than take some of my snapping turtles and kind of go through and show you the different kinds of snapping turtles and kind of compare them together to show you, you know, some of the differences, some of the similarities, and uh, I mean, just have some fun playing with some snapping turtles. So let's get started, and we're going to start with the most abundant one here in the United States, and that's the common snapping turtle. And I'm going to grab one of those for you right now. All right, so this is the common snapping turtle. Uh, this is one of the most abundant turtles in the U.S. Uh, these guys are extremely common. Uh, you pretty much just add water and they can live pretty much anywhere. Common snapping turtles are just really, really tough and really adaptable. They can live just about anywhere. Rivers, streams, ponds, swamps, oxbows, uh, ditches by the side of the road. Um, even, even a really big puddle could potentially be a home for a common snapping turtle. I've found small common snappers in uh, dirt road puddles. He really wants to bite me right now. I've seen in the last few years they've just grown in popularity as pets and you know there's entire Facebook groups where people are keeping them as pets and sleeping with them in their blanket and all, you know kind of to each his own. So I did want to show you the common snapping turtle and we do have uh, a variation on that. It used to be a subspecies but it is no longer recognized but there is a variation and that is called the Florida snapping turtle and I'll show you the Florida snapping turtle next. Okay, So this is the Florida snapping turtle and as you can see, there's some slight differences between it and the common snapping turtle. Floridas have those longer tubercles on the head and neck. And they also have a little bit different shaped shell, a little bit different structure to the shell. And then the tail actually has three rows of large tubercles going down it, uh, the osteoderms, similar to that of what an alligator or a crocodile has. Uh, Floridas tend to be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, I think that comes from living in Florida where you've got alligators and you know just a lot more competition so you got to be a lot more fierce you got to be a lot more defensive in a place like that equally just as interesting equally as adaptable as the common snapping turtle I mean these guys are essentially a common snapping turtle variation found in peninsular Florida and extreme southern Georgia and as you can see they like to bite too I don't recommend if you're keeping them as pets I don't recommend keeping these guys together um, you can get away with keeping pairs together uh, if you give them enough space uh, outdoor ponds, large stock tanks, they can get along as long as it's a pair. You get two males together and they'll just tear each other up and rip each other's noses off and kind of a lot of horrible stuff. Florida snapping turtle, common snapping turtle, really interesting, really beautiful. I'm a huge fan of these guys. I have a whole bunch of Floridas. Uh, this is, I think, my only common. Uh, my buddy gave them to me and he's going to be an educational animal. And, uh, that's kind of what he's doing right now. <laughs> this is... Uh, this guy's name is Scarface. He's uh, one I've had since a hatchling, and he's much more uh, outgoing and tame than, than the others, and less likely to bite me, hopefully. But So the next snapping turtle I want to show is the alligator snapping turtle. And you can see right away uh, the differences between the two. Uh, the alligator snapping turtle has much more well-developed keels on the shell, um, a much larger head with a hook beak, and just a overall wilder appearance than the common snapping turtles. All right, with the alligator snapping turtle, one thing they're very well known for is that lure, uh, that little worm-like tongue. And what they do is, uh, as juveniles and even sub-adults, they'll sit on the bottom and they'll wiggle that tongue when they get when they get hungry. And that lures in fish, fish, crustaceans like crayfish. Uh, even small turtles can get lured into there and then they just close those jaws and they've got their meal. And it's a pretty ingenious way um, of, of getting some food. It's, there's not too many other things in the animal kingdom that actually use a, a lure inside the mouth. Uh, very interesting and certainly for a reptile, that's, uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, these guys have super strong jaws and they actually get to be our largest native freshwater turtle. Um, males are capable of getting up to almost 200 pounds and certainly in zoos they definitely get that big but usually in the wild you're looking at about a buck fifty is pretty much as big as they get they have been caught a little bit bigger than that but um, even a 100 pound alligator snapper is, is pretty massive 
he came from somebody that couldn't take care of him anymore. And so now he's going to go around and Lloyd Christmas is his name and he's going to be an educational animal. And uh, just, a, just a cool turtle. Uh, one of the differences between the alligator snapper and the common snapper is alligator snappers actually have a bridge. And their bridge actually is made up of multiple scutes and multiple bones, whereas that of the common snapper is a single uh, bone, mostly cartilage, that goes across there. Alligator snappers also have an extra row of scutes on the edge of their shell. And the obvious thing that you notice right off the bat is those three massive keels down the shell, which they'll retain even as, even as old adults will still have those keels. So common snappers, as they get older, those keels really get worn down. The shell can get pretty smooth. So that's an easy way to tell the two apart. Uh, alligator snappers also only live in gulf draining rivers. So if you're not in a gulf draining river, you're not going to find alligator snapping turtles. Uh, it's going to be common snappers. So all the people that think they saw one in New York or Virginia or wherever, it's a common snapping turtle. Equally cool, but you're just not in the range of the alligator snapping turtle. He would love to bite me. I'm not, not going to let that happen. I'm not Coyote Peterson. All right, so next I'm going to show you an adult common snapping turtle. This is actually an adult male Florida common snapping turtle. Uh, but you get the gist of it, and we'll be able to kind of cover all the same stuff either way. So this guy's actually really mean, really aggressive, and I always get pretty scraped up. So I can't wait to pull him out and show him to you. So this is an adult male common snapping turtle, and he is really ornery. He would love to bite me but it gives you an idea of what they look like. Just a really strong predator. These guys, as adults, they can eat everything from you know fish, frogs, small turtles, ducks, uh, small beavers and muskrats. Um, you know, this guy being in Florida, he's capable of eating small alligators. You know, as you can see, a pretty good sized turtle and he'll even get bigger than this. And this guy weighs about 20 pounds and he's probably got about a 13 or 14 inch shell. Um, not a happy camper. As you can see, he's got a pretty smooth shell on the back. Uh, definitely a pretty far cry from what the alligator snapping turtle has. Really strong jaws, really long neck, and he can really launch that head out um, pretty fast, as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put him back, and next I'll show you an alligator snapping turtle. All right, so next I'm gonna show you an adult male alligator snapping turtle. And this guy is uh, pretty decent size. Uh, he actually was uh, shot in the head and left for dead. And uh, I kind of helped him out. And it's actually healing pretty nicely. But yeah, this is the uh, alligator snapping turtle as an adult. This guy's not even fully grown yet. And um, just a massive turtle. Everything about these guys is just Tons of mass, tons of weight, um, really strong legs. They've got that massive head, really strong set of jaws. You can see that worm tongue inside the mouth. We'll actually move them over here. <clears throat> and you can see he's got these three strong keels down the back. You know, these are the easiest way to identify the alligator snapping turtle is these three strong keels. First thing you notice when you see this turtle from above is just, you know, this signature shell, three keels, massive head, powerful set of jaws, not an animal you uh, want to be careless around. So I come across these guys a lot in the wild and every single time, just be aware of, you know, what you're doing and treat them with the utmost respect. They're actually protected in their entire range. Each state has their own laws and their own protection levels assigned to them. Um, here in my home state of Georgia, you actually have to have a special permit to have one of these. So uh, this guy is an educational animal and that's kind of what I'm doing right now is kind of teaching you about these guys. And different states have different protection levels. Um, unfortunately, some are stronger than others. I think in Louisiana, they still allow people to uh, take one per person per day of the year, which is actually pretty sad, but they actually eliminated throughout the range commercial take of these turtles. Back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, Campbell's Soup was using these turtles for their canned turtle soup, and that actually decimated the population. Um, there are places that these turtles used to be abundant, and they're uh, almost no longer there. I mean, the populations have just got whittled down because of human consumption. Uh, the biggest threats that these guys face right now 
is still from human take, whether it's food. Uh, another popular thing is uh, poaching for the pet trade. Uh, there's actually a pretty high price tag on adults like this. Uh, guys from Asia and around the world, uh, they got a lot of money and they will pay top dollar to get a hold of these turtles for whatever means, whether it's eating them or keeping them as pets, whatever they want to do. But um, the best thing for our turtles is to keep them wild and keep them healthy and you know, protect them from anybody taking them and uh, causing them any harm. These are some of my favorite turtles. I mean, I'd, every time I see one, it's just, you know, people say they're like a dinosaur. And they're just, you know, the ultimate, they're the ultimate aquatic turtle just adapted to sit on the bottom. They crawl along the bottom. You know, an adult like this, uh, its diet switches over from using that lure uh, for small fish. As an adult, these guys are actually going to crawl along the bottom. They're going to eat musk turtles, crayfish, clams, mussels, snails, um, and a large amount of vegetation. These guys will actually eat a large amount of vegetation going into fall to kind of clean out their gut. And they'll go up under banks in the fall and winter, come back out around March and April to come out and breed. So the alligator snapper turtle is pretty much uh, one of the greatest turtles that we have in the U.S. They're long lived. You know, I'm always telling people um, they should really appreciate these guys because, you know, people see, you know, Galapagos tortoises, Aldabra tortoises, and, you know, everybody appreciates those. Everybody kind of knows they live a long time, but uh, one thing that I think, you know, as Americans and people that live within the range, we should really appreciate uh, that these guys are, you know, capable of living over a century, uh, that they are just so mysterious and so, uh, just so awesome. So I could talk all day about the alligator snapping turtle, but I thought it would be a lot more productive and a lot more fun to actually show you guys one of these. So um, we're gonna put him back and then uh, that'll be it. So thank you for watching this video. If you like videos like this, remember to subscribe and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks. And let him go back into hiding under his stump. These guys love hiding under stump, so I provided a place for him to kind of go, you know, underneath. And uh, because of his injury, I also wanted him to be able to practice going underneath stuff um, to kind of be able to get that injury used to going underneath things and getting kind of worn in. Um, because I do hope to eventually release him. I just was worried that with an injury on his head and especially the way I found it all infected that uh, there's a chance that the infection could get worse if he were to kind of keep tearing it open and hiding in muck and places filled with bacteria. So kind of created something for him to hide under and kind of practice with. So, you know, hopefully in time he'll be good to go. That wound's almost completely healed. So uh, everything's gone real well. So.